In this video, we'll discuss interest areas. Eye tracking research typically involves determining how gaze data maps to certain critical regions of the experimental stimuli. These regions can be specified by creating interest areas, which define regions of interest for analysis. Interest areas are not visible by the participant, but can be used in data analysis and can also be used in specifying regions for mouse triggers or gaze-based triggers. Interest areas can also be created in Data Viewer, and for many types of experiments, creating the interest areas in Data Viewer may be an easier process. This is especially true for video experiments or experiments where each trial consists of an image whose interest areas would most easily be created by drawing them on the image. That's because in Data Viewer, you'll be able to see the stimuli that the participants saw on each trial, and you can specify the interest area boundaries by drawing the interest areas over the stimuli that the participants saw, and then apply those interest areas to all similar trials across participants. For experiments like the one we are discussing in this tutorial series, it's easier to go ahead and create the interest areas ahead of time in Experiment Builder. That's because in an experiment like this one, the locations of stimuli, which would also correspond to the locations of the interest areas for analysis, are already programmed into the project. So, we might as well take advantage of that and use that information to control the position of the interest areas as well. Another case where creating interest areas through Experiment Builder is a good idea is for studies involving text presentation. Experiment Builder has the ability to automatically segment text into interest areas around the word, phrase, phoneme, morpheme, or even character level. The fine details of how to use this feature are covered in other learning resources that are dedicated to eye tracking studies on reading. But in general, this auto segmentation feature can be enabled by checking the Use Runtime Word Segment Interest Area property for any text resource or multi-line text resource. You can also import interest area sets that have already been created in Data Viewer or by other means into the library of your project. These interest area sets are really just text files that follow a particular formatting, and they can be saved from Data Viewer. Once you have the interest area sets in your library, you can then associate those interest area sets with display screen actions via the interest area set name property that all display screen actions have. This typically involves a reference to a data source column that specifies the name of the interest area set to use on each trial. Associating an interest area set with a display screen action will make it so that those interest areas are ready to be used in Data Viewer for analysis. In this case, though, we don't need to create interest area sets for our different trials. Instead, this project just uses interest areas that were created using the interest area drawing tools in the screen builder, and whose location properties get their values from references to data source columns. This enables the interest areas to move around to their appropriate positions from trial to trial. This project has two interest areas in it, and both are in the display target action. One is called target and the other is called non-target. The target interest area moves around from trial to trial along with the target image because its location property is a reference to the target location column of the data source, which is the same data source column that specifies where the target will appear on each trial. The non-target interest area gets its location from a reference to the non-target location column of the data source, which always positions it on the side opposite the target. So the target and non-target interest areas will change positions across trials depending on where the target is presented on each trial. Note. Data analysis is typically easier if your interest areas are set up to correspond to the location of stimuli rather than to static screen locations. For example, 
In this project, we don't have a left box interest area and a right box interest area. If we did, then in data analysis, we'd have to do some extra legwork to deal with our interest areas differently across trials, depending on the target position for each trial. By instead making it so that the target interest area moves around with the target, when we extract any measures that give us information about how gaze matches to interest areas in data viewer, we won't have to worry about determining whether a certain interest area contained the target or not for each trial. It's typically also a good idea to construct interest areas so that they have a bit of a margin around the stimuli they correspond to. Here, the interest areas width and height properties make them just a little bigger than our placeholder boxes. Not to worry if you want to make changes after data has been collected. The exact sizes of interest areas can also be adjusted in Data Viewer after data has been collected, including in a batch manner for similar trials across participants. Also, Please note that it is the data viewer name property of interest areas that is really more important than the label property. The data viewer name property determines what the interest area will be called in data viewer during analysis. The label property in experiment builder just determines what the interest area will be called in the experiment builder user interface. So, please make sure to fill out the data viewer name property appropriately to prepare yourself for analysis.